Doctor, the captain told me we were actually in the South Seas now, right in the heart of them. That's right, madame. The South Sea Islands, the last hiding place of beauty and adventure. That's what all the travel folders say. But, Doctor, I thought you'd been here before and that you just adored the islands. Yes, I do in my own way. What's that wretched-looking spot we're passing? It's one of the South Sea Isles. Nothing like that is mentioned in the folders. Well, it's a little in disrepute, madame. It was mentioned in all the folders, once. That silly-looking sand waste? Has it a name? <laughs> it's the island of Manicur. That was once the most beautiful of all the islands that raised their little green heads above these waters. The most beautiful and enchanting bit of paradise in all the world, madame. I always throw it a kiss when I pass it. Excuse me, madame. What happened to it? It made the mistake of being born in the heart of the hurricane belt. days punishment. And when you have finished those 30 days, you will know better than to break the law again. I'm sorry, but I don't understand what he's saying. He says he's defending himself against the power of the French government. And very ably. Does he deny the theft? No. He offers in rebuttal that there was moonlight. An awful lot of it. And his Lady Love says she saw gold fish in the sea. My dear doctor, I am as sensitive to the whims of love as the next man. But as governor of these islands, I cannot afford to sit round admiring the quaint and the curious. Thirty days, my good fellow. It's not exactly my business, Delage, but you've only been here a year. Whereas I, indolent wretch, it's been a pitifully long time in these islands. I know these people. You're wasting your time pleading for him, Doctor. Oh, I'm not pleading. I'm pleading for you. Not this scoundrel of a canoe thief. You're a sensitive man, Delage. You'll do something to yourself if you try to govern these somewhat childish people according to your ideas instead of theirs. You'll destroy yourself. That sounds very ominous. What is that? Father Paul has sighted the Catapua. Catapua. He's chattering in his belfry. Come along, Doctor. You can complain about my tyrannical soul to Madame Delage. Your wife will like it if you let this miserable canoe snatcher go. As a homecoming gift. Chief Mahavey. He's sentenced to 30 days hard labor on the coral reef. My dear Doctor. I am ready to give my wife and my friends anything I own in the world except my sense of honor and duty. A sense of honor in the South Seas, Delage, is about as useful and often as silly as a silk hat in a hurricane.
I think the ship never comes home. Me too. I think the wind never blows. I feel like praying for the wind that overturns the world to hurry the Catapoo home. I worry about everything when you're away. About the wind, about the waves. Sometimes I worry the fish eat you up. Me? You worry about me? Why, I'm the best sailor in the whole world. I know. I'm the best swimmer, too. I know. And tonight when we come out of the church, oh, Morava, I'm the best husband in the whole world. I know, I know. Shut up, you don't know anything yet. Happiness went with you to France. But it's returned now. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the safe return of our loved ones. Amen. Madame, we've certainly missed your civilizing influence. Here's to your homecoming. Your health, Doctor, and Father Paul's Madame. and yours, Chief Mahavi. All our people are happy that you come back. Thank you. Tell me, Father Paul, <coughs> how's my husband been conducting himself in my absence? Like a good uh, governor. Has he fallen under the spell of the tropics yet? No, Madame, he's been staunchly under the spell of honor and duty. <laughs> I don't suppose there's any use of my inquiring whether my uncle answered my application to return to France. No, he said nothing. Farewell, O Café de Rastam, for another year. I'm sorry, Doctor. Yes, and in Paris, our good doctor would weep day and night for his little half-drowned homeland, the island of Manicura. <laughs> Why, he's as deeply rooted in this place as I am, or Chief Mahavi. My roots are parched, Captain. Well, pardon me. I think we'll drink this one to Mahavi. <laughs> I brought him back the finest bridegroom in the islands. Yes, I know. I see him jump from mast. Who's that, Mahavi? Tarande. Oh, I'm delighted to hear the news. I didn't know he was going to marry your daughter. You've been too busy with your report cards to France, Delage. The romance is known to every child in the islands. I'm delighted. <laughs> Tarangi is utterly charming. He was so delightful on the trip, he kept hanging from the top of the mast like a bird with wings stretched for home. I do hope you'll be able to leave him behind for one voyage, Captain. He's planning on spending his honeymoon in a canoe. Well, I'm sorry. I'm afraid it won't be a very long honeymoon. I'd as soon sail without sails as without my first mate. <laughs> you know, Doctor, the more I see these natives, the more I think they're more bird than man. Tarangi can smell a wind before it's begun to blow. He knows every rock on the sea bottom, and he runs a ship as if it were a pair of shoes on his feet. I was saying that very thing to Delage. I wasted ten good minutes pointing out to him that he's the governor of a flock of birds. Not birds that should be put in a cage, but birds that should be allowed to flutter through the sky, which they own. With stolen canoes and their bills, you forgot to mention. When are the nuptials to take place, Father? The wedding will begin at sundown and will continue until the entire native population is exhausted. <laughs> <laughs>
had a dream. I had no dream. I slept. Tarangi, don't sail away on the ship. Without me, the ship doesn't move. It stands still, in the middle of a wind. Don't sail away. I don't want to, but I smell a wind coming. By noon, the wind will be good. I dreamed that all the birds flew away from Mauna Kea. From Mauna Kea? Well, where did they fly to? There's no place to go. They flew away. Rama, did you dream there was a wind? No. It was quiet. Only the sky was full of birds flying away. The dream's no good. Because how could the birds fly away if there is no wind? They only leave when the Ifumutuni comes. The wind that overturns the world. The world is gone when you go away, Tarangi. Stay here. You're only married a few days, and already you're an old wife full of words. What are you worried about, Marama? But you're going away. I come back. If something happens to the boat... Then I swim back. Where's my cat? No. No. It's very funny what a difference a cat makes in the world, Marama. In Tahiti, when I wear this cap, everybody's my friend. You think I'm just Tarangi, who used to swim with you when you were a little fish. <laughs> In Tahiti, when I sit down in a cafe with this cap on, I'm just the same as a white man. Frank, take me with you. No, please. I like to, but I can't. Please. I won't take any room. I'll sleep on top of the mast. No. You can hang me over the side of the boat at night and, and, and pull me along with a rope. No, Mariah. Only take me. Please take me. <laughs> Aboard this boat, Marama. Please, Captain Ego. I go to Tahiti. How did she get aboard? Did you bring her? No, no. I come in a bag like a coconut. What's wrong with going to Tahiti? I never been. I go just once. Now listen, Marama. The longer you stay aboard, the further you'll have to swim back. You have no reason to go to Tahiti. Oh yes. I buy a dress with a ribbon on. And red shoes with high heels. And a hat with a feather. And a petticoat with flounces. And a doll that dances. All right, all right, you stay on board. But we'll take Tarangi's cap away from him, and he's through being a first mate. I can't have a first mate with a bride hanging around his neck. He'll be an ordinary sailor from now on, scrubbing decks. Give me that cap. Oh, no, no. No, don't take his cap. No, Tarangi, he won't. Goodbye. Hurry right back.
to blame. If you're his witness, Captain, there won't be any trouble. But he's got to be surrendered. All right, come on, Tarangi. But I'm going along. I'll see the governor about this. I've spent eight hours, governor, running from pillar to post, trying to find out why my first mate has been sentenced to six months in jail, and for doing exactly as you or I would do under the same circumstances. Your boy hits too hard, Nagel. Not half hard enough, sir. I saw the whole thing. I even testified in court. The sentence is unjust, Your Excellency, and you know it. But surely, if six months in jail isn't unheard of in a serious case of assault and battery. Come, Nagel, it isn't a matter of life and death. You don't know the Tuomoto natives. They're not like your Tahitians. They can't stand confinement. There's something behind this, sir, and I want to know what. A mere matter of maintaining European prestige? A native mustn't raise his hand against a white man? Your boy not only hit too hard, but uh, he hit the wrong man. That rum so bully. Strange it seems, he has influence at home. As soon as he recovered consciousness in the hospital, he cabled the Ministry of Colonies. So Tarangi is made a victim of politics. I'm afraid you're right, Nagel. I sail for Manakura in three days. You can't pardon him, Governor? Later, perhaps. Not now. Rangi, I've done all I can. You'll have to take your punishment, quietly and cheerfully. You hit too hard, man. That's all. The next time you hit a man who imposes on you, take care not to break his jaw. You're too much of a man to store up any bitterness. Your berth will be waiting for you on my ship. Time will pass quickly. I'll explain everything to your wife. Will you give her this? Sure, I will. Now, don't you worry about her. You remember what I've told you.
Tell you what I'll do, Captain. I'll put him on the road, gang. Keep him outdoors all day. He's going to take his medicine all right. I hope so. Convict? Huh, the Catapora. And wouldn't you like to be going home? Go on, pick him up, get moving.
wouldn't have had this happen for anything, son. It just hangs another year on your sentence. That's the penalty. That's what I've got to go by, the law. Lucky you didn't break from the inside. That would have added five years. Now you behave yourself. We don't want to keep you here any longer than we got to. Long and short of it was, I couldn't do a thing for Tarangi. Oh, how silly, how unjust. It's up to you, Delage. To me? I fail to see in what way, Captain. As governor of his island, you can ask to have him paroled in your care. Hmm. And much as I should like to do just that, Captain Nagel, I don't think it wise to interfere with the administration of the law in these islands. Oh, administration of fiddlesticks. The man's absolutely right. It isn't a matter of law. It's political pull and injustice. Just a minute. Just, just a, a minute. minute. Well, uh, let me explain the case a little less, t less legally, Captain. Delage, our friend Tarangi isn't just an errand running islander. He's the best loved of every man, woman, and three-year-old child in Manakura. Now, you're not only allowing him to rot in jail without reason, but you're offending all your subjects. And what's worse, Delage, you're hurting yourself. Your concern for my soul, Doctor, has flattered me for some time. I must ask you to concern yourself with my more physical ailments. He means well, dear. He's only saying what, what we all think. I know he means well. I know you all mean well. But I am not the representative of well-meaning points of view. I represent a civilization that cannot afford to show confusion or conflict to the people it governs. The law has spoken in Tahiti. I must uphold that law. Would it uh, influence your sense of duty at all to know that Mrs. Tarangi is about to be a mother? Really? Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That puts everything in a different light, doesn't it, dear? You can explain to the authorities. No, it merely puts me in a worse light. Now I'm not only Tarangi's persecutor, I'm the oppressor of an unborn child. I think it's unfair, darling, to appeal to a side of me that's very strong, but that simply cannot function as governor. I understand you, Delage. Thank you. And my heart feels sad for you. Well, six months isn't forever. Tarang is young. Let's make the best of it. It's very easy to say, Father. But I have to tell her. Marama? Yes. He sent her a little gift. Oh, uh. I'll take it to her. You. There's no need for you to put yourself out, darling. Yes. There is. In six months, it'll all be over. He'll be back, and you'll both forget so soon. Go away. I want you to come with me and live in my house while you're waiting, Rama. There's a lovely garden, and you could sit I don't there. go to your house. It'll be easier, Rama. I don't want it any easier. To rank you in a jail. You're right. It won't be long. Because no jail can hold Tarangi very long. If it has a window in it, he'll fly away. If it has water around it, he'll swim away. And everybody will laugh at the jail that tried to hold Tarangi. They'll laugh. laugh. <laughs> It 
It's another two years, Frankie. Every time you try to break out, it's two more years. You have jurisdiction over this case, Delage. I don't deny it. You're the only man who can save him from this mad thing that's happening. He's broken the law. What law? The law that condemned him unjustly to prison? The law that refused him the simple rights of a human being? I can't. Eugene, don't be angry what I'm going to say. I love you. I know your heart. Please stop, Jermaine. My feelings are my own. I won't have them discussed. Sixteen years in a cell with rats for companions. And for what? For thinking himself greater than the law. For breaking jail. For defying authority. Man alive, you can't do it. Now, you've been here long enough to know what these people are. And Tarangi's the best of them. He'll not live in a cell. He'll die. You're condemning an innocent man to death out of a... out of a cold-blooded whim called honor and duty. Will you listen to Mahavey? Perhaps the chief can think of something. Tell him what you think would be just, Mahavey. Excellency, the people in my island were all happy before. Now they're very unhappy. This is not good law or good justice. Delage, you once asked me not to worry about your soul but to concern myself with more pharmaceutical matters. Well, I'm back on that worry, Delage. You're not only condemning poor Tarangi, you're condemning yourself. You're condemning yourself to black nights and dreams of ugly remorse, to the bitterment of a man who prefers to be a martinet instead of a human being. You'll see your guilt as a man written in every face in Manakura. You'll walk as if you were dead among them without ever a smile or a greeting if you lived in these islands for a hundred years. It'll dry you up. It'll kill your heart, Delage. I am doing my duty, Doctor. I come of a family that has administered the affairs of my country for generations. I understand how strongly your humanitarian feelings run. And yours, Germain. And yours, Mahavi. Understand mine, then. They run as deep. There is no Tarangi. There is only a man who has set himself above and beyond the law. It is not a question of justice or injustice to a human being. It is a question of upholding the law under which these islands are governed. I am not asking for anyone's smiles as my reward.
take a good look, convict. You haven't got Fat Sam to deal with. He wouldn't take my advice, and now he's out. And now I'm in. And by all that's holy, you're in. And you're gonna serve every day of your 16 years. And if you ever want that iron off your leg, you're gonna break, see? You're gonna open that ugly mouth of yours and act like a human being.
Did you ask the doctor over tonight for chess? Yes, I'm sorry he was busy. What about Father Paul? He had a christening. What's that confounded noise? I don't know. There's no festival this time of year. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a walk, take a look around. I'll go with you. Get your wrap. I will. Perhaps it's something nice. Perhaps it's a native dancer we haven't been told about. Get your wrap. I heard this noise. I came here to find out what it was. The people are celebrating, Excellency. What are they celebrating? Their happiness, Excellency. What has given them happiness? Tarangi. What about him? He has escaped, Excellency. When did you hear this? Who brought the news? I have had no official report, Mahavi. Six hundred miles from Tahiti. The drums have brought the news. The birds have brought it. Do you hear that wind blowing? Well, it came in the wind. <laughs> what do you got to say to all this, Delage? Is there any law against dancing and singing when the heart's happy? As your governor, Cassandra, I demand what information you have. Is he on this island? Have you seen him? <laughs> you don't have to see him. He's a legend. You can celebrate him like Bastille Day. He's the soul and symbol of all these good people. No, Kate, you can hold them. They're the last of the world's afflicted race of humans to believe in freedom. Let them there! <laughs>
his escape. Last voyage. May I ask why I wasn't informed? It was an official matter. I saw no reason to interfere with the excellent official system of communication. Murder. Did you know there was a man murdered by him? He broke the bars that held him in a cage he didn't belong. What murder? I imagine this puts an end to the legend of Tarangi. There'll be no more escapes. He'll be caught and sent where he belongs, sent to the fortress of Cayenne and stowed away in a dungeon till he's dead and forgotten. Dead and forgotten like any lawbreaker. Murder and anarchy will leave no legend behind. Yes, father. And you came from Tahiti? In that canoe? Yes. At least 600 miles. Why did you come? I want to go home. They say you killed a man. I don't know. I hit him hard. Did you mean to kill? No, only to go home. You're only a few miles away now. Before you tell, Father, let me go home for one day. I have a daughter. I've never seen her. Tell me, Father, has she waited for me? Yes, she's waited. How can I be your judge? You've sinned, 
but others have sinned more against you. You weren't meant for evil. You were made to do evil. How can I judge? You won't tell, Father. No. We found you in the sea. We shall leave you on land, near to those who love you. No, no. You owe me no thanks, my son. This is between me and somebody else. Yesterday, fishing. <laughs> to Motutonga? But he doesn't know it. Why didn't you tell him? What? Spoil their surprise tomorrow morning, you young rascal. I'm ashamed of you. Come back. I've been waiting. Eight years. Long time. You are the same. You? The same. Who's that? She's Tita. This is what I dreamed of all the time. I dreamed I'd see you again. And my child. They'll find you and take you away. They can't take this hour away or this day. They can only take away tomorrow. I have waited as long as I dared. You must go now. They know? The island knows, but not Delage, not yet. He will find out. He will hunt you down. Delage? Why will he hunt me? What have I done against him? 
his heart is black against you. You must go tonight. Where, Father? Fanua Eno. Fanua Eno. Forbidden place. It is taboo. No one goes there. No one will look there. You will be safe there till you die. Terengi, stay hidden till the darkness. We will load my big canoe. You will start when the island is asleep. Coming up. This is the worst I've seen or heard for a long time. Like devils running around. Mosquito pots are Can you imagine Paris in the wind like this? Oh, all the silk hats blowing off, all the bouquets blowing away, all the ash cans bouncing down the avenue. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid civilization wouldn't look very pretty in a high wind. <laughs> I've missed you from our dinner table, Doctor. Eugene's been pining for a game of chess for a long time. So have I. You know, Eugene and I have been having a feud. Um, you want me to go? Uh, no, thanks. A sort of battle of souls. Let's check our souls for tonight, Delage. Hmm? Let's be Frenchmen, both of us. You're not angry at the doctor, are you? No, I'm not angry at anyone. It's they who are angry at me, all of them. Black looks and mutterings. Father Paul, why isn't he here tonight? Praying for my soul, I suppose. They love their precious murderer. Oh, let's let's forget Tarangi just for tonight. Forget him? He haunts this island like a school of ghosts. I can no longer sense what's going on. I took a walk through the village today. There's something strange in the air. Strange? Well. The wind gives the island a different smell. No, not the wind. The natives behaved poorly. Some of them smiled at me, kept watching me and smiling. I had a feeling that something queer was going on behind my back. Something strange, hidden, important. Well, the only thing important that's happening in the village today is that Mama Rua is dying. Tarangi's mother. Right, she's gonna die. And Marama's sister's having a baby. <laughs> you know, I play a kind of a chess game with the oldest gambler in the world. Dead. He takes Mama Rua, and I checkmate him with a baby. <laughs> I think I'll have another drop of cognac, just to keep the wind out of my bones on the way home. I've never been on the island in a storm. Did they get very bad, Doctor? I've heard tales of them. Winds that blow the islands out of the sea. But I think Manakura's pretty well anchored. At least part of it. Devils are brought tonight. I'm afraid we're all in the body.
you doing there, boy? Answer me. What are you up to? What are you doing with the chief's canoe? Stealing? Stop it, eh? Very well. Come along to Father Paul's house with me. Careful with the sail. Excuse me coming at this hour, Father. You're welcome. I want your help. It's yours, Delage. You know this boy? Yes, Marco. He's a good boy. He won't lie to you, Father Paul. Oh, no. Ask him where he was going with that canoe. Whose canoe did I? A boat loaded with food. Food being smuggled to Tarangi. He's on this island. He's being hidden. He's waiting for the boy now in that canoe. Father, I didn't tell. I didn't tell. Hear that? He confesses. Captain Nagel smuggled him in. I've been waiting for that. And you refuse to come to my home tonight. Why? Because you know. You were afraid to face me. You're guilty. They're all guilty. The whole island. No. I'll break Nagel for this. Neither this boy nor Captain Nagel had anything to do with it. Langi was picked up at sea. Ten miles from here. By whom? You. When? Last night. You helped Tarangi. You, my own priest. I'm his priest, too. You helped a murderer. I aided a man whose heart is innocent. You betrayed your own government. You've given aid to anarchy and bloodshed. I'll answer for it. You'll answer me, priest. Where is he? I don't know. He knows. You're in the presence of your own priest, boy. You dare not lie. Where is Tarangi? Do you ask this child to betray someone he loves, Delage? I'm asking him to tell the law what he knows. The government demands information against the murderer. There are stronger things than governments in this world, Delage. Something deeper, more real. This child has that in his heart. Though you tortured him, he wouldn't speak. He shall pay for his silence. And I shall bless him for it. I've never seen the barometer so low. Did you send my note to Captain Nagel? Yes, he's waiting inside. I'll come to the point at once, Nagel. I'm commandeering your schooner. Oh, but this wind is too strong to be out in. How soon can you be ready to sail? The weather's bad. How soon can you be ready to sail? Captain Nagel's only thinking of your own safety. He's only here. trying to frighten you, Jermaine. I'm not trying to frighten anybody. We can't find Tarangi in this storm. It'll get worse. The barometer's falling. It'll blow itself out in 24 hours. If I let you delay me, it may be too late. You'll get away. We're squarely in the track of a rising wind. The barometer's falling, I tell you. Eugene, you must listen. I'll listen to one voice only, my own. Well, as I told you a long time ago, you're in by destroying yourself. I'm ordering your schooner in the name of the government, Nagel. Take it along, Nagel. Go on out in this wind, Elijah. Maybe you'll find something more important than Tarangi. When you feel the might of the sea and the wind, maybe you'll discover there's something greater in this world than the French criminal code. Yeah, Tarangi's out there. He's paddling through this storm in a canoe. Go chase him. Then hear God howl and laugh at you. Get your ship ready. I'll be ready when you are. Oh, Eugene, Eugene.
the island? We're on the highest spot here, my daughter. Even if the sea reaches us, the walls will keep it out. Take madame. No, I'll stay here with you, Father Paul. Let take me. Take her. Take her back safe to the world that has wronged you, Durangi. Please, madame, go. Durangi, take her. Yes, Father. Oh. Those of you who wish to go, go now. Those who wish to sing with me for the last time, stay.
there is the child. survivors, Doctor. Is that all? Jermaine, my wife? I wish it could have been me instead of her. I gave you up as well. How did you pull through? We were at the edge of the hurricane. You were at the center. What is it, Tarangi? A canoe. A war canoe. Then Father Paul took your wife to the church. It seemed the safest place. I'd have gone too, except I couldn't desert my patient. That's the last you saw. Well, it grew so dark, you couldn't see the church from the reef boat. But when that bell stopped ringing all of a sudden, I knew what happened. Nagel, as soon as you can get your engine running, we'll make a search. The survivors. I must make a report, list all dead. I shall want all details, Doctor. Come with me to the church. The ship will find us. I know that. The ship will come. And then they'll take Tarangi. Oh, no, Marama, no. But they will. I know they will. Tarangi knows it. But they'll take Tita and me, too, because I'll make them. Be quiet, Marama. It doesn't matter now. We're lucky to be alive. Mama, te pahi. Dear, my dear. 
I thought I'd lost you. But I never gave up hope. Jermaine, forgive me. Forgive you? For what? For everything I've failed to be since we were married. Oh. I've faced it all today. I've nearly gone mad. Take me back to the boat now, Eugene. I'm so dreadfully tired. I know, dear. Where are the others? There are no others, Eugene, not a soul. I was tied to a tree and drifted here alone. All the others were lost. Let's go back to the boat, Eugene. Eugene! Eugene, take me back to the boat! There's something out there. It's only a floating log. Right, Charmaine. It's only a floating log. <laughs> 